Welcome back, everyone, to Tia Know, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mo Clever. And right now, we are doing Returning to the World. The dark days of the Warlord era have finally come to an end, and our young nation has finally climbed out from the abyss to establish itself as a true regional power. In the past, we have had little need for a foreign ministry, as diplomacy in the Warlord period usually involved the sword rather than the pen. The world beckons. We now find ourselves in need of capable diplomats now more than ever. The foreign ministry must be expanded to meet the requirements of properly conducting international diplomacy, and they shall begin making contact with the nations of the globe as soon as they are able. Let all of the foreign powers know that socialism has returned to Russia in earnest, and now we could prepare for Russian reunification, but we still have quite a bit of our focus tree to get to before we do that. So <clears throat> Now we can do lessons from the Second Patriotic War and study foreign strategy, or we could do lessons for the Unification Wars and get more army professionalism, which is probably the route I want to take. Lessons from the Unification Wars. West Russia is united under the Red Banner once more, but the roads to get to this point was bloody indeed. The wars to bring the region under control some of, saw some of the bloodiest fighting since the Second Patriotic War. Despite the Red Army's victory, the constant warfare exposed some serious flaws that would need to be addressed before we continue the reunification. Each warlord, the, Russia, the Red Army, crushed and used different strategies and organized their forces in a unique fashion. We will take into account all the forces we encountered and see if we can incorporate their strengths into our own forces while avoiding their weaknesses. Which is a very, very good thing. No, we don't want to click on that one. Yep. Anything here? Civilian war sport would be pretty nice, but I think we're okay for now. Right, uh, we're getting a lot more of a deficit, which is really not good. But we're building, 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 building. And we're doing a pretty good job, I'd say, overall. But tactical flexibility. It is often said that no plan survives first contact with the enemy, and this was no more apparent than in the Unification Wars. Despite having detailed strategies in place for dealing with our enemies, more often than not, unexpected developments would leave our commands staff floundering and unable to re react in time. All the while, our units on the field suffered for while their officers panicked trying to determine what to do next. These individual disasters could have been easily avoided had we implemented a more flexible system of unit tactics. More autonomy shall be given to the officers in the field, who will be trusted to improvise should the chain of command break down in the heat of battle. And instead of relying upon orders on from high, officers shall instead count on their own initiative and tactics utilized by individual units, which is very, very good. Alright, anything here? Industrial expertise? Yes, please. And let's continue with a moder modernized force. Our efforts began paying off. Or are paying off. The Red Army is beginning closer to resemble the very same force across the AA line into fascist occupied territories nearly a decade ago, finally bearing the markings of a professional military. However, the truth is that we've not gone far enough. Our current Red Army would have been considered top notch in pa decades past, but it's hardly up to modern standards. The General Secretary has approved a massive increase in funding for the Red Army intended to aid with more intensive modernization efforts. No longer shall we lag behind the rest of the world through the application of cutting-edge modern technologies and intuitive new tactics. The Red Army shall transform into a force ready to face the modern battlefield. And it looks like someone has gone. Iberia has defeated somebody. And the Kazakh Military military uh, Academy. Well, that seems pretty good. Oh, but how about we do some technology first before we read about the Academy here. Uh, let's grab this one. That would be very, very good. And good. Kazan is home to one of the nine... Oh, no, it's not Kazakh, it's Kazan. Kazan is home to one of the nine Surovov schools that were created during the Bukharin era. These specialized boarding schools were intended to provide young men with a secondary military-focused education, and as such, many of the Red Army's officers started their careers in these schools. Ever since the unfortunate collapse of the Soviet Union, however, the school in Kazan has mostly gone unused. We shall renovate this building and reopen a new institution in its place, the Kazan Military Academy. Rather than being intended for secondary education, this new academy will be created with the express purpose of training new officers for the Red Army. Once Kazan's academy has been re-established, we can begin creating the next generation of Red Army Officer Corps. Good. Span cut for now. So, the necessity of inter-service operations. Should we put our total efforts towards the Red Army, or do we aid some of the other services? It's an interesting question. On one hand, we do have something about the German air superiority, and Air Force would give us certain advantages over something else. But if you would like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. But, an Air Force would certainly give us advantages over the other warlords. And a submarine fleet might be able to do fun things with German shipping. But is it worth it? The Air Force will never be as good as German 1. Neither will the Navy are with our limited industrial potential, and a Navy wouldn't be that useful in the wars we have either. And the efforts we would put could make our army just a bit better. What do we do? Well, let's focus on what we've excelled at historically. Or we let's branch out a bit for air doctrine and land doctrine. Uh, we're done, almost done with our land doctrine. And actually, do we have any bonuses here? Let's see. Two for what? Uh, let's see. Land doctrine wise. I think we already have bonuses for that. So we get bonus here anyways. Army XP is really nice. But let's get the air doctrine because we can still use that too. So, and let's, you know what? Let's grab some better anti-tank. That seems pretty good. 
and doctrinal uh, refinement. The needs of a modern battlefield change in the blink of an eye, and if, not one, if one is not careful, they can find themselves falling behind the curve sooner than they think. Despite our best efforts, however, the doctrines in use by the Red Army are so hopelessly trapped in the past. If action is not taken soon, our enemies would surely run circles around us. The time has come to analyze our strengths, strategies and refine them to be more suitable for a contemporary conflict. Not only must we bring the Red Army up to modern standards, but also keep a sharp eye towards the doctrines of the future after all. Working to maintain a clear advantage over our potential foes is paramount to achieving victory with the People's Army. At the end of the day, it is the rank and file who make up the beating heart of the Red Army. The soldiers of the Soviet Union were at one time legendary for both their devotion to the socialist cause and their unflinching tenacity in battle. Our own troops are certainly not lacking in either of these aspects and it would help to further encourage such professional ideals for the new recruits as well. The ideal vision of a truly visionary soldier must be realized once again. We need able-bodied men and women who are willing to undertake any sacrifice necessary for the motherland. Soldiers who would make the Red Army worthy of proclaiming themselves as the strongest, and we get even more army professionalism, which I should have done earlier. But that's an okay thing. Alright, very good. And Avtomat Kalashnikova. The AK-47 is truly a remarkable battlefield rifle. Capable of firing rifle-sized cartridges at 600 rounds per minute, the Kalashnikov has also gained a legendary reputation for reliability. The rifle can survive a tremendous deal or level of punishment, and is able to survive even the hardiest of conditions without encountering any sort of problems. On top of all of this, it's easy to maintain and relatively simple to manufacture. Whoever said that you cannot improve perfection, uh, but whoever coined the, that phrase has obviously never met a Russian weapons designer. We'll begin trials on a new standard battle rifle for the Red Army, deriving from the tried and tested design of the AK-47 in time. Our troops will hopefully get their hands on a weapon even more effective than the vaunted Kalashnikov. And it is almost 70. Oh, 69 really, which is nice, but still. Uh, let's go pitch this stuff off, why not? In a few days we'll have the advanced infantry rifle, so we can make some better ones of that. And we will probably go ahead and do some anti-air, might as well. This will really help that they have an Air Force, which sometimes they don't, but it's alright. There we go. Because we have enough infantry rifles for now. And we just upgraded the stuff, too, which is very, very good. We got... Oh, how many guns do we have? Um, we're going to need a lot of guns, don't get me wrong. But... We got plenty of artillery, too. Um, we cut it down to maybe 10, maybe? How many divisions are we making? Oh. Don't worry about that, guys. Just keep making more if you need to. And for our tanks here, it's not too bad. It's pretty good. There you go. Cool. And time for some coffee too, shall we? Oh, that is hot. Oh, baby. Substandardizing so the arsenal. But let us continue with the Ministry of Revolutionary Defense. With the expansion of our territory comes an unavoidable increase in the number of officers needed by the Red Army's general staff. This would not be too much of an issue if it was not for the fact that the War Ministry is currently a chaotic mess, virtually unchanged from the days of the Komi Republic. This sorry state of affairs cannot be allowed to persist. The War Ministry must be reorganized from the ground up to better serve the needs of a considerably larger area of operations. With some extensive streamlining, it is believed that the chain of command will flow more smoothly. Generals will be able to receive any and all necessary information about combat readiness or battlefield conditions at a moment's notice, enhancing our, their abilities to command our troops. Oh, Harold Wilson's been elected. Red flag still flies here. Cool. And we've got four days left. And I would love, love, love for more societal development, but we currently do not have that, which is big sadness hours, really. The new Northern Fleet, the Red Air Force. I kind of probably want to do that one first. That'd probably be good. Black market available, very nice. Standardizing the arsenal. Atvomat Kalashnikova is an excellent weapon. Created during the turmoils of the 50s, it's easy to maintain and most importantly learn, but no weapon is perfect. Many drawbacks to the AKs of our army is that most of them are produced by a myriad of different workshops all around Western Russia. With a comparatively small list of amount of rifles produced in proper factories in Ev Izhevsk and Zlatovsk, which causes a lot of troubles with their maintainability. In order to change, a new pattern of AK should be created, which would be a standardized rifle for our army. Just a bit of polish needed. Cool. A new Red Air Force. We still remember the dark months spent in the shadows of the fascist terror bombing campaigns. Only, our only source of salvation was the brave exploits or ex adventures of the free aviators, but even they could not be everywhere at once. With the situation in West Russia stabilized for the time being, we must learn to uh, stand on our own two feet in case of Luftwaffe returns to our skies. The use of aircraft is nothing new to us, but without a proper military wing of our own, uh, the potential of our air wings or of our wings is needlessly limited. Therefore, an independent air arm of the military, the Red Air Force, shall be created. To aid with, it is, with the establishment of this new force, we shall expand key air bases under our control to house more aircraft and begin development of modern aircraft to help dominate the sky. Let's hope it goes well. That goes Iberia. Kaboom! And let's grab this and finish off our live auction. Great! 
know what? I think I want to do this one next. Restore international trade. If you'd like to read about better research of facilities, please go right ahead. But, restore international trade. The White Sea now lies open to us, and yet we still have no proper fleet to conduct international trade with. The uh, nature of the Arctic waters makes the task more difficult than it would seem. The port of Arkhangos is almost entirely frozen during... Uh, the winter months, and our, thus our merchant marine will require a specialized fleet of icebreakers to clear a path through for our trade partners. According to our foreign office, the nations of Scandinavia are already quite receptive to our offers of reestablishing trade. Due to their close proximity to our ports, they would be a relatively hassle-free journey for our merchant fleets, as long as they're able to circumvent the frigid conditions of the White Sea, which would be a pretty good thing. And, you know, I was complaining that we, we were a little bit behind here, you know, reunifying the western part of Russia, but when we look at the Far East, Arkutsk and Cheetah are still trying to kill each other. My goodness. How? I mean, jeez. Well, Louise. Mikhail, I know you don't want to be here, but you have no manpower, and Akutsk has no manpower too. Seven divisions, six divisions. I mean, my goodness. Restore international trade. And probably have an event or something? No? Gateway to Europe. Uh, let's go with the new Northern Fleet to finish this one off. We are restricted to a landlocked status during the Kuomintang Republic days, which meant that there was little practical need for a naval force. Situations changed dramatically, however, with access to the sea secured via the critical port of Akhangosk. Uh, the time has come to reorganize the beginnings of a new Red Fleet. While the port is frozen over during the winter, it is nonetheless the most important port west of the Urals that still remains in Russian hands. Our navy will be tasked with the protection of this port, rather than large-scale naval actions against enemy fleets, as we do not have the capacity or capability nor the need to build a large armada of ships. So that's very cool. Uh, do we something here? Russia, prepare for war. West Siberian Provisional Authority gets event cold days. West. I, mean, I guess technically. Uh, so last time we took out Omsk, I guess we can still do this stuff? Which is kind of okay with me, so we can keep building stuff up here. We get more military factories, more manpower, grand showdown. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. But. Alright, I'm okay with that. Yeah. We get more political power that way too? Cool. A new northern fleet, my friends. Ah, uh, LBJ's been elected to a second term. Transpolar diplomacy. To the entry now, the front of the waste of the Arctic seem like nothing more than an insurmountable obstacle to any kind of fleet. The ice providing an inconvenience for the port of Arkhangelsk in the winter months. While this is not entirely false, the truth is that these frigid waters are among the only remaining gateways in a Rush West Russia still controlled by Russians. As such, it will be prudent to foster good relations with the various nations of the north. We shall extend an olive branch across. The polar territory, Scandinavian countries such as Finland and Sweden are to receive requests uh, for diplomatic recognition while the very first overtures towards the OF, nations of the OFN shall be sent to Iceland and Canada. No country is outside of our reach, even if they lie beyond the treacherous waters of the Arctic. Good, good, good. Let's grab some of that. And let's come back over here and grab maybe some better artillery. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not bad. We're still building very, very well. Loads of cities. My apologies, I had to sneeze there. Woo! Build, 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 my friends. Transpolar diplomacy sounds like a lot of fun. Aid from the east. You know, this, this is a lot of debt that we do have. That we're trying to cut down on, though. Uh, Admirals wanted, acquire with him. Unfortunately, our area of Russia has been known for strong naval traditions. This makes finding eastern seamen for our new navy difficult, but it makes finding new officers and admirals next to impossible. But we will put a stop to that. Experienced fishermen, extra navy uh, men, promising recruits, these will make a nucleus of new officer corps. We'll drill and have them read up on Nelson and Mahan and Yamamoto. We won't have the best officer corps in the world, but we'll have the best we can, can have with the circumstances. That's all we can ask for. We may get the next Spiridov if we're lucky. Maybe, if we're lucky. And then, the enemy of our enemy. In the most ordinary circumstances, the OFN will be our greatest adversary. Adversary. The U.S. has, has long established itself as a vanguard of predatory capitalism, essentially opposed to the socialist cause in every way imaginable. These are, however, not ordinary circumstances. The black ties of Hitlerism has washed over Europe, leaving only a path of death and destruction. Even the Soviet Union was not spared from the aggression of the fascists, and now our very heartland lies at their mercy. We will need allies in order to overcome this threat, and the OFN are the only international alliance who share this goal. A message shall be sent to the OFN in good faith, requesting their diplomatic recognition. With luck. This agreement shall be the first step towards a further cooperation, even if these are, even if we are hesitant to work too closely with the capitalists. Very, very good. We do get some more stability, and the U.S. gets contacts from Russia. And then, how about we do the gateway to Europe? 
Europe lies under a vast wall of steel wall fascism, but there are many ways to pierce this barrier if one knows where to look in particular. Our neighbors in Finland provide a convenient avenue for this purpose. Relations do not have exactly been warm due to the past tensions, but perhaps it is still possible to reach common ground. We will send a message to the Finns with a few polite requests. Firstly, we will ask for diplomatic recognition to further cement ourselves as a legitimate Russian government. Secondly, access to the ports will be requested. Although we control ports of our own, the fact remains that they are frozen over in the winter months and have no access to the Baltic whatsoever. Land access to Finland's territories would solve the issue quite handily. But if they hopefully they will go along with it, I have a feeling they won't. Especially since we beat them up pretty, pretty effectively when they refuse to hand over Russian territory. So, you know, it is what it is. There you go. Approaching free Norway, we'll probably do that. Swedish diplomatic mission, an English embassy. That'd be kind of cool. But happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. I didn't realize that we were already in 69, but approach free Norway. It would appear that the iron grip that Nazi Germany has over Europe is not nearly as tight as it seems. Norway was once ruled by an oppressive Nazi colonial government, their freedom cruelly denied by the Germans in the quest for total domination over their neighbors. Miraculously, the situation has made a dramatic reversal. The Norwegians have finally thrown off their shackles and removed the Nazi regime from power, establishing an independent government in its place. They're now surrounded on nearly all sides by fascist influence, and we will need all the help they can get. Uh, we will send... A de delegation to free Norway, offering military assistance in exchange for recognizing our government as a legitimate successor to the USSR. Good. All right. So, actually, how far are we with this all stuff? Because we're doing really, really well. Uh, we're close there. We're going to factory complexes. Poverty's looking a little better. Modern agriculture. So we don't need agriculture anymore. Modern research facilities not bad. So really, just agriculture we can ignore. So as much as I love to do it, we don't need it anymore. Education. That one. That one. And then good. Very, very good. I can't believe we already have maxed out agriculture. That's very nice, actually. Very, 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 very nice. And we got some better artillery. Great. Get some better APCs, too. Why not? And approach Free Norway. Good, 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 good. Oh, that, they're just going to go over in there, but an English embassy. Even the proud English people were not spared from the advance of the Nazi Germans. Following the Second World War's German line government was imposed upon them. Luckily, it was not to last. The English have overthrown this illegitimate popular regime and restored an independent state in both defiance of the fascists. And bold defiance. The struggle is not over, however. And many international observers have considered the possibility that the Germans may soon retaliate to re-establish dominion over England. Should this happen... We shall stand with them in the form of military aid. If they recognize our government, we will begin to send them as many weapons and munitions as we can spare. Good. And cross the Urals. Sure. Also, a couple comments. Uh, so people recommend we try out Spare sometime. There's two different routes. I've, if I remember, Spare, the Gang of Four, just Spare himself. Uh, we could try that sometime, as well as plays Goring, but you have to be really, really fast about Goring. Yeah, he... he Goring is an interesting uh, character. The Fat Man. Very interesting. But, the Swedish diplomatic mission. Or, success with Norway. Success! The Norwegian government has accepted our overtures of cooperation and has officially recognized our government as a legitimate successor to the Union and rightful government of Russia. Already, our diplomatic teams are preparing to establish an embassy in Oslo and our government is reaping the benefits of diplomatic recognition. Which is wonderful. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Whoa, look at that. Now, instead of 12% annual debt interest, it's 9.1%. That's not bad, my friends. That's not bad. But, Sweden. Sweden is one of the few... European nations that has yet to fall under the sinister influence of Nazism, retaining their status as a fully independent democracy. Their neutrality during the Second World War may have been seen by some as cowardice, but in the end it meant the complete preservation of their sovereignty. Diplomacy with the Swedes is paramount to our goals of establishing international relations, especially when one considers their proximity. A fully-fledged diplomatic delegation is to be sent to Stockholm, with the goal of requesting their diplomatic recognition. Should they accept, uh, we will be one step closer to establishing government as a legitimate entity. Very good. Very, very good. And let's see, now we're at 15 billion still? That sucks. But at least our GDP growth is a little bit closer to our debt interest. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still sucks, but still. That's better than what it could have been. Build, 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 my friends. There's never enough building here. And solidarity in action once we get the event about Sweden. Oh, look at that. Uh, free England to cleanse our offer. Unfortunate news, despite our generous offers and messages of goodwill, the English decided not to accept our terms. They claim that the situation is simply too unstable to accept any sort of diplomatic overtures for the time being, and they would rather wait until they are in a better position. At least that's the excuse they gave. That makes the least amount of success for anyone here. We kept the red flag flying. We are literally the same ideology. We're both libertarian socialists, and you reject us while the Norwegians, who are liberal Democrats, accepted us under Garbo? Son 
I don't know what even what they're doing now. Wow. Uh, Grove equipment. We still uh, we don't need. Well, we don't need that one either. As much as I want more GDP and monthly population, we don't need that one. Uh, construction speed. We're gonna go with that one. Equipment. Poverty. Yes. And higher important constructions. That's all we need. So two of these are for agriculture. I didn't realize that. But that would help with coring stuff. But at this point, coring stuff won't really matter too much. Whatever. Solidarity in action, though. The Soviet Union was once. <clears throat> The bulwark of the global socialist cause, sponsored by sponsoring the comrades around the world, no matter where they came from. Ever since their collapse, however, the dismantle has gone unclaimed for nearly two decades. With the socialist government restored in West Russia, we must regain the initiative. The idea has been floated of holding a conference in Rykov in the interest of fostering relations with socialist parties from across the globe and reaffirming our commitment to the international worker. Representatives from hundreds of countries would be invited to attend and discuss how to proceed with advancing our mutual goals. This conference will hopefully re-establish our government as the preeminent socialist power and a friend to the workers of the world. For a diplomatic conference. Well then. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll go well, maybe it won't, so. Come on, Sweden. You're better than the English, right? You're better than the English. Yes, they are. The Swedish government has accepted our overtures of cooperation and has officially recognized our government as a legitimate successor to the Union and the rightful government of Russia. Already, our diplomatic teams are preparing to establish an embassy in Sweden, and our government has begun to reap the benefits of diplomatic recognition. Wonderful. The Rykov Conference was a good first step to reestablishing solidarity with fellow socialists from around the world, but we can go even farther. With the collapse of the USSR, the communist international that it had established had fallen into irrelevance and eventually became defunct altogether. We must rekindle this flame and create a new entity for encouraging global cooperation. A new socialist international has been proposed, like the common term that came before. The second term will enable more effective economic and political cooperation between all the socialist parties of the world. Even in these dark times, the second term shall ensure that the revolution will prevail no matter what trials lie ahead. Solidarity forever. Cool. Alright, anything else here? Uh, expertise, not really a big fan of that one, but you know what? If it's helping society, it's helping everyone. For a free world. Actually, how long is it? Oh, 25 days, that's fine. So, 100,000 manpower, we have a total of 43 infantry divisions. It's still two normal, you know, tank divisions. The Rykov Conference, excellent news. The Rykov Conference has been a splendid affair. The parties were invited were cordial, honest, as old entities were swept beneath the tide of global revolution. The minor disputes that occurred were quickly, uh... <clears throat> settled by conference chairs, and on the whole, the meeting was both productive and enjoyable. If this conference was, is any indication, it appears that the ideological force of socialism will once again return to the global scene. Let the worldwide enemies of the proletariat and popular justice tremble before the awesome power that allied, so allied socialist nations. The international ideal unites all the human race. Yeah, I was wondering when the Central Siberian Republic was going to go and just kind of stomp them down. Oh, Likhakov. Likhakov. They have 32 divisions max. A lot more, no, more manpower than us, which makes sense. Just because we've been producing and making so many more divisions. So let's finish this one up and we'll reunify all of our part of Russia. And it's almost 1970. Cool. Abu Kharina. Ah, oh, what a woman. Alright, my friends, we've got it done. Uh, oh, and found the. Ooh. No one else is a member. That kind of sucks. So, um, I would love to do another one of these, but. I think it's time for Russian reunification, more stability, and become the Russian Soviet Republic. We changed to a, a slightly purplish Russian Soviet Republic. Extra influence. Um, if they're not united yet, we might just want to go in first. We can probably just do with their infantry too, so. There you go. So, this happens every time. If you'd like to read about the these focuses, please go ahead. I'm just going to go and click on these guys, just because I've read it like seven times already, so... If you want to read about closed facilities, go right ahead. If you'd like to build a foundation for research, please go right ahead. Address the Union problem, expand the Kurgan mines, uh, foreign source materials, and chase the sun. So, I'll only read one of these, and basically it's the same thing for all of them. We received news that the ruling party of Belize, Sweden, and Bolivia has accepted to, to join the Solstice International as an associate member. Their presence as observers on the organization's meeting will let them gauge our progress, and in time, perhaps the closer ties between our nations will lead to the growth and the full membership. Welcome, comrades. Great, great, great. Ah, socialism. Motorized. Oh, wait, look. Even Guyana accepts. And Finland accepts, even though we beat the crap out of them. And the United Republic of the Arabian Gulf accepts as well. And the West Indies. And Wolofia. Wow, we actually have a lot of people here. Found the Comic Con. The, wait, why is it. What? They're in the. They're, they join the co prosperity sphere, but they're social. Uh, social Democrats, I guess. Welcome, comrades. Yeah, they're in the co prosperity sphere and the Republic of Sao Tauma. This is weird. This is a very weird thing, but found the ComCon. Um, I don't want to invest anything in here, so eligible eligible non members join the Economic Bureau. 
If you like to be out and wonders, please go right ahead onto an uncertain future. And but this one is gonna be good. Scientific Bureau is really cool. Uh, they probably don't need money. I'm not gonna invest anything here for now, so I don't see a point of it. Formation of the sock intern, very cool. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad. I like to withdraw the funds so we can cut down on my own debt, but that's okay for now. Anything else here? So all we have is decreased black market trading. That honestly would probably be a pretty good thing to do. Keep spending so we can keep building, 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 because we are nowhere clear or near done. Uh, we can probably start finding this stuff too. Decrease black market luxury trading. Uh, let's see. There you go. Collapse in Egypt. All right. So we currently have what? The General Assembly opens. Look at that. Ever since the creation of the SOC intern, work has been gone going to prepare a great assembly. There, representatives of the world's socialist parties would be able to gather to discuss issues and propose various motions. Today, the work is complete and the assembly is ready. Members of the SOC intern will be able to propose motions and vote on them through a secret ballot. The addition of the assembly to the organization's charter will no doubt prove to be an important tool in the struggle to advance so socialism internationally. A glorious day for the workers worldwide. Uh, let's go and do that one too. That'd be nice. And, yeah, I just keep doing all this stuff. Offer mutual nap. Why does this cost so much political power? Uh, Commonwealth of Britain? Wow, this costs a lot of political power. And, do we have substantial? Uh, British investment. The fatal flaw of capitalist ideology reduced to its basis element is the inherent subsidization of greed within the hearts of men. This subsidization draws from the degenerative focus on competition where only the fittest can survive. The common claim is that when competition drives forth innovation and the success of American industry has been pointed to that as proof as such. Uh, <clears throat> there is a new argument, though, that this American technological prowess does not exist because of competing corporations searching to squeeze out every last dime of the human, humble workers' labor. But in spite of them, today we join something larger than petty barbaric fighting over knowledge that could be shared. Today we find that cooperation will bring us an international socialist future that all of us have dreamed of by way of technology. Today we join our comrades across the globe and join the ComCon Scientific Bureau. Our cooperation is our strength and not our weakness, and the people shall be ascendant. More minds are always appreciated. And better APCs, my friends. Well, off for membership to Tajikistan. Oh, they accept. Nice. So if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. This is going to happen pretty much every single time. Welcome, comrades. We're going to need quite a bit of this stuff. Oh, boy. Um, I don't want to cut this down too much. There you go. Actually, how many planes do we have? It's not great. We could definitely use more fighters and such. Black market available. I'm not sure why. Reconquer Iberia. Good for them. Investment in the ComCon Research Bureau. Uh, if you want to read about this again, it's the same thing, actually. More minds are always appreciated. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's fine. That's whatever. Cool. Mutual non-aggression pact proposed. It's time for the soccer intern to consider a new proposal. What are the nations propose a mutual non-aggression pact between all soccer and inter nations? They argue that the revolution must not follow infighting that this pact is the first step toward making soccer intern a viable force within global politics. Of course, not everyone agrees, and some claim that this would be a waste of time, and this pact would be unfairly restrict the sovereignty of the member nations. Approve. Approve. Okay, how many times are we going to approve the thing? Quite a few times. Project Molinia would be nice to do. Com con. Uh, voting on the non-aggression pact. Uh, let's see. Uh, the proposal for the mutual non-aggression pact between all SOC and members has reached the General Assembly. The debates from earlier have been revived, attempting to sway votes to the side of the 11th hour. The proponents of the motion claim that there's no valid reason to oppose such a motion, claiming that the only traitors to the revolution would refuse to sign such a thing. The opponents claim that it's not for the SOC enter to determine such matters, and that it should be left up to individual nations to determine their own diplomacy. Eventually, debates and arguments ended, and the votes could finally occur. Now is the time for decisions to be made. Do we vote in favor of motion, against the motion, or abstain? Vote in favor. Uh, I'll vote in favor as many times as I need to to make sure it passes. Oh, look, we voted three times, and we got 6-3-3. Nice. I love diplomacy. Let's do established stuff. I'll go with this one. Expand the Kruger Mines. <clears throat> and we go to war with them, which shouldn't be too bad, since these guys are busy with the Far East and Cheetah, so... Oh, Urkusk has fallen. Oh, well. Wow, that's a lot. How do you get more manpower? We still have military austerity. War support's 4%. Um, promoted gender equality. Okay, well, that's very weird, but okay, sure, why not? I don't remember ordering for black market stuff, but okay. In four days, we shall go to war. Have a good time. Take out Kazakhstan. Core a lot of places. We need to keep our pee-pee. 
Wasn't there a way I could invite more people here? Ah, oh, beautiful. Hopefully these guys don't want to get involved too, but that's alright. Even if they do, we, we can still probably take them out. Oh, never mind. We still have some 12 combat with military divisions. What the heck? Master Mocha Lover, what are you doing here? I apparently have no idea. Uh, let's go with the close facilities so we get some more development and more infrastructure, which is nice. And we'll probably do this one next. The uh, Foundation for Research. Doesn't sound too good, now does it? <clears throat> but, oh well, it is what it is. Yeah, you guys should all have all been made 40 combo with. There you go. I don't care if we're going to be out of equipment or not. It, it, it's just time we do that, so. Oh, more divisions, thank you. Couch how many thousands have we lost? 7,000 versus 61,000, not too bad. They actually have 18 divisions. That's probably one of the times that they have the mo more, way more divisions than they had previously. Usually when I fight them, they have like six or something. You know, not a lot of divisions. And we'll do a foundation for research. Going up by seven a month. Three and a half. Oh, we did it, my friends. We did it. Glorious. Let's pause it real quick. There you go. And let's core everything that we can. A lot of core. A lot of stability we're going to lose, but it's worth it. It's really worth it to get more core manpower. Can we get rid of that? Where's the black market trading things? Oh, there it is. There we go. Not bad. Ah, uh, effective armaments. Ah, uh, we'll just let time go on for now. That's fine. More armor breakthrough. That's nice. Happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Wow, we're very libertarian socialists here. We still have some authoritarian Democrats with a power vacuum. Despotism is a power vacuum. We've got ultranationalism, power vacuum, and authoritarian socialism with Mikhail Suslov, even though... I thought we got rid of him. Oh, well. Oh, there we go. Band cut. 17 billion now. Wow. Foundation for research. And source form materials. Very good. 9.8. Even better. Even better. 17 billion, though. That's a lot of deficit. It's all right, though. We got, now we're going to focus more on, a little more on industry and maybe on artillery for our divisions. So, once this one's done, that'll be good, but... Alright, Tom, what's going on? You're going to get more manpower. Oh, they're out of manpower right now. And they're still fighting Cheetah. Wow. Uh, they're up to 51 divisions, so they have plenty of time to build themselves up. Cheetahs. Well, they got two. That's not very good for them, now, is it? There they go. They finally did it. Civilian construction will be next. And chase the sun, my friends. Chase, chase that sun. Are we out of equipment of any kind? Yes. Anti-air, that's pretty normal. Uh, let's grab the next trucks, that's fine. Trucks aren't really super important to worry about. But look at that. 400,000 some manpower. Beautiful. We have 47 divisions of normal uh, stuff. And we need way more tanks. Holy crap. Holy, holy, holy cow. Wow. We have a lot of civvies to make. Cool. Now I'll be done with the next focus very soon. And then we can begin with the next one. The path of liberation. Despite all odds, we've managed to liberate West Russia and West Siberia. Our people cheer in the streets for they know that freedom and prosperity is at hand. While we undoubtedly have to work to ensure that West Siberia is truly integrated into a government, it seems that the sun shines on Bukharina's ideals. We must not falter now, for we must continue to on onwards towards utopia. Good. And then, making peace? The triumphant reforms. While we are... 
while we were able to enact some reforms after the unification of West Russia. There was still much doubt about Bukharina as a leader that prevented her from enacting the bre full breadth of her plans with the successful reclamation of West Siberia. Many of the doubts about Bukharina have been swept away, allowing her to push onwards. The time has come to begin enacting further reforms to push the people closer in a truly social society. These reforms will include ensuring equality for all, investigating the necessity of the familial unit, and ensuring that traditionalism's influence on society is greatly weakened. We shall ensure that the Soviet Union is a utopia for all. Cool. A walk through Omsk? Well, we'll do that very, very soon once we get uh, some advanced battle tanks. Bukharina walked along the riverbank, appreciating her surroundings. The Izvish was a surprisingly pretty river, and the city of Omsk had certainly beauty to it. It was nice to have a short period of time where she could breathe and reorient herself. In a way, wasn't that what she was doing in Russia with Russia? A calm reorganization of efforts being pushed to the specific? She chuckled, shaking her head. This was supposed to be a time where she didn't think about politics. She brushed those thoughts aside and continued onwards, allowing the cool breeze to blow on her. She took off her hat, feeling the wind flow through her hair. It felt nice, as if she was never able to spend much time outside. It was almost as if the winds of change were blowing in her favor. She had so much more left to do. The people of West Siberia had suffered so greatly, and she would have to be she would have to be assisted by our government. There was so many social reforms she'd have to implement as well. She need no. Her reforms would come soon. <clears throat> But she had to set her goals aside for now. After all, it was such a gorgeous day outside. Who is she to waste it? The future beckons, my friends. It absolutely beckons. And in the Valley of Equality, to strike down traditionalism. Uh, let's see, total surface equality, more manpower. Um, let's see. Do I have anything else here? Like. Oh, I'll do this one. Strike down traditionalism. In the chaos of the Russian anarchy, the people that turned to traditionalism and religion. Now we've ended warlordism in the West, and we have to show the people the trappings of said traditionalism. It may seem beneficial to stick to the ancient truths, but it is these very truths that stagnate society. We'll choose the director of revolutionary preservation in order to help uplift the people to a modern socialist ideal. We'll replace this decriminalize with legal protections. Nice. And then, with the recent gains of territory, Bukharina has seen it to prudent to implement some social reforms. These social reforms, at the core, are a package of laws meant to ensure that all people within the Russian Soviet Republic are seen and treated as equals. Not only will we ensure protections for racial minorities, but also for women as well. After all, as a modern socialist country, we cannot allow over half our population to be deprived of the rights they deserve. They will undoubtedly be controversial. As people will try to push these off, push off these reforms until Russia is more stable, we'll have to wait... We'll, but to wait will mean to be nothing but a betrayal to the socialist ideal. Equality for all. And let's go and grab what? Uh, that's nice and all. It's a more monthly gain. There you go. Now we have an OPP. Encourage experimentalization. Or experimentalism. Experimentalism. We must encourage experimentalists' art amongst our people. For far too long, artists have stuck to the old ways because they are old. While the classics of art may be beautiful, they are not the only way to acquire beauty in art. It is time for the people to broaden their horizons so that they are not bound by the chains of conservative antiquity. Cool. More political power, monthly population, division, recovery rate. Very nice. Uh, black market order failed. No one cares. A simple. Yeah, I'm also done. Why not? And then the value of equality. Any socialist will talk about equality, just question them, or question them, and they'll go on about the equality of man to woman, of Russian to Indian, and so on. However, what is much rarer is a socialist said or that backs up said values with action. All too common is a socialist will state their belief in gender equality just to turn around and deprive women of their rights. We must break this cycle by not only espousing the values of equality, but by supposing or supporting those who have been wrong in traditionalist culture. No longer will women have to languish because of their supposedly inferior, and no longer will ethnic minorities have to suffer from racism here in Russia. Cool. Cut. And then making the peace. While we have stamped out most organized resistance to our rule, there are still rabble rousers who seek to revolt against the regime and undo our social reforms. We must task the director of revolutionary preservation to preserve the order and ensure that we do not become unstable, because being un becoming unstable is not very good. Usually. Very good. Um, how many divisions do they have? Because now we're looking at about 50. I think 50 divisions is pretty darn nice. I could be wrong, so maybe we'll cut down on a little bit more. Yeah, we'll do that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about... No, not really worried about the cost, but... So it's good to keep costs in mind. How many divisions do they have? Up to 55, maybe, themselves. Eh, we'll see. We still want more tanks anyway, so... Let's see. Produ introduce the creches, which is not bad, but hurts consumer goods. A place for the family. Uh, bravery and comfort, we get more stability, less population, approval population factor. Let's do the egalitarian family, let's do that one. While the family may have its issues, dissolving the family is more trouble than it's worth, as the cohesion and support it provides to society is unmatched by communal child raising. The better option is to promote egalitarian relations with the family. The wife does not need to stay at home, as she has every right to go to work. Furthermore, children, as they grow into adults, are not obligated to listen to the every command of the parents. By promoting egalitarian ideals within the family, we can hopefully break through traditional cycles nestled within, allowing for the revolutionary potential of a family to truly shine through. Let's get rid of the black market trading. 
and foundations of the people's society. It seems... What the heck is Netzeram? Oh, look at that. It seems that our uh, social reforms have begun to bear fruit. More and more, people treat others with respect as compared to the contempt they would have before. However, just because our reforms are working doesn't mean that we can merely stop now. We must always keep moving forward so that we can create an ideal social society. Bravery and comfort. Sophia took a deep breath, trying to push away her fear. Alexander, I want to become a Frankfurt stock market crash. Oh, wow. A teacher, she said, getting straight to the point. She felt her heart pounding. Oh, God, what if he said no? What if he had... Okay. Sophia looked at Alexander, shocked. Would it really be that easy? I know my family has a very dim view of women, especially wives working, and I trust them on a lot of things, but I can tell you how much you want to be a teacher. Your passion for it is very evident, he smiled. I love you, Sophia. You're supposed to be through so much. I'll always do the same for you. Alexander hugged her. Sophia felt her eyes tear up as she hugged him back. No matter what, she had her partner there to support her as an equal. And so a familial cycle of tradition is brought to its end. Oh, look at that. We lose political power. I don't like that, but trust the goodwill of the people. Continue land expropriation. We get more income. Okay. A surprising problem we've run into during consolidation of West Siberia is the issue of land. Many peasants own a pittance of land at best, while landlords are worryingly common. We must rectify this by distributing all land in West Siberia so that the people may have the land they need in order to survive and prosper. Good idea. Very good idea. As much as I don't want to lose PP, we still get 1.23 every single day. And we lose some more stability, which kind of sucks, but we get more income, which is very, very nice. Very good. Very, very good. The Universal Soviet. We are all human in the end. We are all workers and peasants and people. There is a certain unity, no matter how much capital say otherwise, that exists between all of us. We must show the world of the people the idea of Universal Soviet, that we all work towards a common goal in one grand union. That's the eyes on the unproven, authoritarian socialism, trusted people's goodwill, registered voting with universal voting. We lose even more political power. Oh boy. The benevolent state, data cohesion, we're going to lose more money. God dang it. Hmm. But the Universal Soviet will be next. And as, if you want to read about Eyes of the Unproven, please go right ahead. But we're going to choose the other one for now. 1970 is very good. With trust the people's goodwill. The people are not the government, even if the government was the reactionary. The people may very well not be the same. We have to ensure that accepting the, that we accept the people of West Siberia as opposed to treating them with suspicion after all. It is trust that helps build a better government. More Max Factories in state. Thank you. And trust the people's goodwill. So much debt. Or so much. I'm pretty good about GDP. I'm ready to smash the people to the east if we can. How many divisions do they have now? That's an interesting flag they got there. Very interesting. Very interesting. 52 divisions maybe max. Manpower is plenty. Ah, uh, screw it. Maybe we'll keep making a few more. We'll go with two. Why not? Oh, we do have uh, two more take divisions, though. That's pretty good. But the benevolent state. More than anything, the state is a critical part of social society. It helps provide for the people and ensure that the freedoms and socialist ideals of the people are upheld. If we must keep a watch on the populace through surveillance to ensure that freedom and socialism are upheld by all, then so be it. Good. And we should do all power to the Soviets. We must rearrange the government so that it is governed by on, more on a regional level. This is primarily means giving power to the regional Soviets, of course. While we let them handle their affairs, we must also keep an eye to ensure that the Soviets do not become controlled by reactionaries. And poverty gets up even better. Good. Spend more. Keep spending, 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 spending. We gotta build, 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 build. And actually, we need to build more in all these areas. As much as I love infrastructure, trust me, I love infrastructure, but... Civvies are the way of the future for now. The benevolent state. Oh, power of the Soviets. Black market is available. Not for long. Not for long. I don't know why that's still available, though. A future to be proud of. Now that the vast majority of our reforms have been completed for now, we can march onwards towards reunifying Russia. Furthermore, we can build a future that we can be proud of where equality truly exists and the people are happy. If you'd like to be a, a, read about our proof academic base, please go right ahead. That's something to be celebrated. Oh, great. We get more war support, which is nice. More manpower. Not very much, but that's okay. And it's approaching 1971, and we get the future beckons. Now, it feels like this part of the tree... Like this last slow brand for Bukharina, it feels a little unfinished and could use a little bit more polish, but that's just my opinion. Inspiration. Uh, Ivan listened to the radio surprise. He had heard from one of his friends that the government would be making an announcement tonight while well, being part of the local Soviet. Uh, 
took up his time, it was his duty to ensure he was always up to date on governmental affairs. What he had heard shocked him. Devolution of power to the regional Soviets? Did this truly mean that the Soviets would have more control than of local affairs finally? It was surreal to Ivan, who had seen the central government as a sole controller of power. He felt inspired. Maybe now was his chance to carve out a name for himself. He'd be sure to remain loyal to socialism, of course. Ivan had no plans to get into trouble now of all times, especially when change seems to be on the horizon. He grabbed a piece of paper and pen. Best to start writing down his ideas now, and if this was truly the new reality of Russia. Handing over controls inspires all, after all. Cool, and everything else down here, I kind of doubt it. Yeah, like, like I said, um, it feels like it's... Could use a little bit more polish. It really could probably use more polish for the tree. It feels a little bit lackluster, just a little bit. So, but I know the devs are always working on, you know, the the mod. So, uh, do we have anything? Oh, there we go. Main battle. Thanks. Good. The future beckons. Bukharina sat on the park bench enjoying the cool breeze. She had done a lot of work over the past few months and had been a long time since she was able to take a proper break. Now, since her walk in Omsk, has she been able to properly relax? Her mind wandered for, for once free to political concerns. However, her thoughts after time would inevitably drift back to politics. Bukharina was content. Her farms had borne fruit, and it seemed that the Russian Soviet Republic was stronger than ever. Men and women stood as equals, and those of different race were not oppressed anymore. Unlike so many other socialists, she had worked to ensure that these rights weren't in name only. Bukharina could only hope it was for good. It was a good start for fighting for equality. Now, West Siberia stabilized, and the foundations of a new Soviet forged, a new Soviet Union forged. The time was approaching to unite all of Russia under one banner. Finally, the chaos that plagued Russia for decades would be ended. However, that could wait for one more day. It was a beautiful day outside, and Bukharina would be remiss to let it go to waste. United forever, one can only hope. Keep training if you need to. At this point, let the tanks keep training now, because I know some of these guys just... Oh my goodness, it, they need way more tanks. That's the main thing that we're missing here. Anti-tank, artillery, infantry equipment. Yeah, main battle. They have literally no tanks that are... Holy crap, that's really not good. What are we doing with the tanks? 0.9 a day? Well, let's just focus on the tanks that we need right now. So, that helped out with quite a bit more. So, keep training for now. As we're making only one a day. Why is that? Is it because of rubber? No, it's not because of rubber. Wow, why is this so bad? Well, hopefully we get some more efficiency gain and stuff like that. But, let's not pause the game and keep moving onwards to get ready to defeat the people to our east. Get more factory output. Cold days. Worrying. Very, very worrying. But not really worrying at all. Ah, uh, there we go. Going to do this. We just did this earlier, so not bad. Grand showdown, the final conflict. And which they're probably going to go to war with us, which is fine with us. Advanced development phase. Uh, get more monthly progress gain. I like that one. Even though it, 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 just go with all of them. It doesn't matter. Cool. And we currently get how much war sports or command power? 0.76 every day. Not bad. Not too shabby, but yeah, we're done with the focus tree now, which kind of sucks, but you know, it is what it is. 17 billion, 11 billion, that's not too bad. As long as it's almost double black market. Why is it available? I thought I cut it off. Um, yeah, uh, I already got rid of it, so I'm not sure why it's available, but whatever. I can't wait for them to attack us. Their divisions are probably 40 combat with, yeah, they're probably really, really thick. If you'd like to do about better army professionals, then please go right ahead, because that's usually pretty good. Excellent. Now we have political interference. We got even more attack, defense, planning, organization, recovery rate, all the good stuff that we need for our army. Very, very good. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Build, 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 build. When you're done, build even more because we need more GDP. That's artillery. Very good. Very, very nice. 72. Uh, I come back over here and do that, 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 that. Let's do this one. Cool. We have enough artillery in reserve. Military austerity. Cut. Spend more. I know it, it keeps going up because we keep making more divisions. As you can see, we just made two more here. But I want to make sure that we're really, really prepared for whatever may happen in the future. And good. So they should actually go to war with us relatively soon-ish. So there's that. So four divisions. I might just cut this division out, but it actually is looking a lot better now. It's actually looking a lot, a lot better. So minus 600, which is not good. Anti-air is getting better. Other than that, we're doing really quite well, even though we could use more planes. Jeez. We never have enough military factories, because I always build more civvies. <laughs> so it is what it is. We should do, really do relatively okay, though. Quarter million manpower. The enemy's kind of reformation. 300,000 manpower that they have. Up, they have less than 50 divisions, which is less than us, so we overall have more divisions. And our divisions are very, very good, so. 
<clears throat> Come on, keep going, doing whatever we need to do. 25%. Actually, how is this stuff coming here? So secondary schooling, what's the max amount? Academic golden age, it's not bad. Uh, oh, better stuff here, that's good. And let's grab some of that. Even more defense and breakthrough. So right now, uh, what are we like? Research facilities, we're on modern research facilities. Which is not the best. We like we could get politicized academia, which is very weird, but not bad. I mean, that makes somewhat somewhat sense. But it feels like modern research facilities should be right below cutting edge research facilities. We should go with outdated research facilities to politicize academia, maybe instead, and then maybe or militarize. Like we should have options. Like we should go from outdated maybe to either politicize or acad militarize, and then to modern research facilities or cutting edge facilities. So it'd be like a branch. You could get on politicize or militarize, but maybe that's just me. Of course, modern agriculture is really, really good. Uh, let's see. We're not going to get anything done here yet. Poverty. We're actually going to get an improvement to poverty, which would be very nice. So we're at this one, and we get done down here. It's even way more income rate factor. A little more taxable population factor, which is all very nice. We get even more construction speed, less monthly population, though. A better industrial equipment. There you go. If you want to read that, please go ahead. We have modern industrial. Oh, that's work. Good. So that's actually very good. Modern industrial equipment. We're not at cutting edge though, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. We have no debuffs, which is very, very good. And there goes Iran. Wow, 1.81, that's pretty bad. Uh, and ex experience industrial base, which is going up very nicely, and political interference, but hey, that's okay. Can't be perfect on everything, right? Strike Siberia. Well, let's stop training. Get everyone a lot more organization. And they might go to war with us. Oh, we were so close to finish training there. Well, let's just add on into war. Actually, they might be doing that already, so. And we want to reunify the motherland together. Wow. We've already built up all the cities we possibly can here. Almost. Whoa, look at that. 120% infrastructure. Look at that. Now that's nice. Now that's socialist realism. Rise in Germany. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember ever Speer doing it like this. They had a lot of divisions, of course. Oh, they went to war with us. Oh, what are they up to? Riots? Oh, they have no focus tree? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Do they attack us? Do we attack them? Well, so far we're winning. We've killed off of already 6,000 of them. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, maybe we should cut, stop cutting down our military budget then. Of course, they have plenty enough manpower. Tomsk is a capital, which is not bad. Very, very good. Air superiority is probably going pretty well for us. Yeah, we're not doing a lot of damage, but we're doing as best we can right now. Anyone have upgrades? I kind of doubt it before the war began, so. I do have four tank divisions, which is actually pretty nice. Now we've killed off already 27,000 while losing 1,000 ourselves. Not bad, not bad. And you guys have... Yeah, you guys should have had this. Three, two, one, go. Boost, boost. Boost both, who cares? Could have cost us 18 billion, but that's okay. 2,000 versus, well, they've up. Oh, no, they actually have quite a few more divisions. They lost 64,000, but that doesn't really mean too much with all that extra manpower that they do have right now. Um, yeah, not bad. Stockpile. Hey, there's a decrease in poverty. Toaster economist. Beautiful, beautiful. What? Wow, okay, I didn't even click on it, it just went away. I literally didn't even click on it. Oh, they're out of guns. Look at that. They're actually out of guns. Wow, they really screwed themselves. So, even though they have manpower, if they have you no know, guns, like, you might as well not even play. Go there so you can beat these guys up. Alright, well, three more divisions. Go bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, 200,000 men have died. Jeez Louise. Ah, uh, that's so much better. Slave revolt in the Reich. Uh-oh. Oh! oh. oh. Hold on, I've never seen this one. Is there a thing for this? Whoa. I've never seen this before. What the heck is this? A slave revolt? Holy cow! Arm... Army Verband Freies... Europa. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm glad. I'm, I'm really glad I played this campaign. Then, holy crud, that's actually really cool. Uh, let's grab some more of this. That'd be good. Seventy-one. Let's grab some of this too. Wow, 
Are these all... No, they're not cores. Oh, man, that'd be so strong if they were all core territory. Freedom or death? That's really bad that they don't have unity and diversity. And they're no cores. That's really bad, then. Are they going to go to war with each other? Paul, please show me that we're, they're going to go to war. Reichsland Balkium? Oh! Okay, Russland Schoen is over there. Reichsland Balk... Clear the trenches. Oh boy. Stability would go up, extend the olive branch. Whoa, 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 whoa. How are we doing over here? I'm completely ignoring this completely. 10,000 versus. Jesus Christ, that is insane. Alright, so we definitely don't need any more divisions. There you go. Uh, more civvies? Uh, that's incorrect, sir. You have more than enough roads to build, my friends. Wow. Oh, Volgerstadt is here. Deutsches Freikorps, huh? Liberal democracy, wow. Just, I'm not sure what to say, but just wow. Well, I've killed half a mil- Okay, two-thirds of a million. Not bad. Pretty good. I'd say that's pretty good. Well, wouldn't you? I would. Please go to war with these guys. Please, please, please. I want to see conflict over here. Irkutsk is the capital, and we shall have it. 700,000 have died. Not enough. Like these guys had a chance. Do we have any upgrades yet? Yes. Nothing interesting, though. Tankies? No, no. Kind of sucks, but yeah. Keep building, building, building. You're doing a great, fantastic job. Three quarters of a million have been almost achieved. Arkutsk is ours. We have more free military factories, which I'm not sure what to do with. Uh, so we'll send you to the tanks. All right, we love Indonesia. Now we can actually make some serious planes. Hopefully. 1.65 early... Oh, we need we should have research more casts. I completely ignored the planes this time around. Alright, Germany, what are you doing? Open ports. Got more resistance. We're probably out of guns or something. No, we got plenty of guns. We've got off uh, less than 800,000. Not bad. Uh, what's the capital? Is it Magadan? Oh, it's down here. Blagoveshenk. Yeah, I don't think there's any hope for them. A centralized apparatus. Oh, please go to war with other people, please. Actually, do they have their own faction? Is it the Zolverein? No, the Einheit's back still. Separated by Hungary. That kind of sucks for Hungary. That is so cursed. Even the French are in the Japanese sphere. What the heck? Even when we cut down on civilian and military spending, we still have a deficit, which is really bad. 800,000 have died. Not bad. Well, we've lost about 20,000. Not bad, my friends. Beautiful. Ah, hey, we have some dockyards. A whole one. Alright, let's go and core everything we can. Even though it's not going to really matter at all, but that's okay. Forgot about that stuff, but whatever. There you go. And pause the music. Reintegrate or reunify the motherland. Restoration of the USSR. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Will she learn from her father's mistakes? Maybe. A fresh revolution, my friends. But that is going to be the end of the campaign for us here, my friends. We have done well as Bukharina, and but you can really tell, like I said earlier, like there's a little few things here and there that 
Could maybe use it more polished, a little bit more forming, you know, for like event or focuses and their descriptions, or even just like some of the events. Obviously, the, like I said, the devs are still working on TNO, despite any sort of controversies and stuff. But regardless, um, I I always enjoy playing as different Russian unifiers. But I really don't know what Speer is going to do here with this group. I would love to stay here and just kind of keep watching them. But I think we've got to end it here. So if you enjoyed the campaign. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thanks for watching, have a great, great rest of your day.